For those that follow energy wave theory, or EWT, the underlying hypothesis is that there are not two laws that govern the universe, quantum and classical mechanics, but that there should only be one, classical mechanics. Now from there, a theory was built over the past decade, which is largely a mathematical model and one that builds on the wave structure of matter. Following the scientific method, a hypothesis must be te tested, predictions made, and observations recorded. And while the main hypothesis of EWT is difficult to test, there are elements of the theory which can be separated into predictions which can be validated by experiments. This video summarizes seven predictions for particle physics experiments, some of which have been previously documented in EWT papers, but now summarized for the first time in one video. The next step is patiently waiting to observe results, which require complicated experiments. Now, unfortunately, particle physics experiments are not simple experiments that can be tested at home. Experiments that detect quantum-sized particles and their interactions often require high energies and or complicated equipment to measure particles. The expense of these experiments is significant and outside the scope of the EWT project, which is why the work on the theory was confined to mathematical models and computer simulations. However, there are large-scale experiments that are being conducted that can validate the theory, even if the original reason for the experiment was not proposed, necessarily, for EWT. So instead, we can watch for results from one of the following types of experiments, predicting results which should vary from currently accepted theories, such as string theory. Now, there are seven predictions in this video, but they should come from one of these four types of experiments. And the first one is large particle colliders which smash particles at high speeds to measure results. Particle colliders continue to be upgraded with higher energy levels, so these next predictions have been ordered based on time, and the likelihood of seeing a prediction come true as required energy levels are met to produce the predicted results. The first prediction is that particle colliders will see more pentaquarks in proton collisions as energy levels continue to increase. Why? The original model of the proton was three quarks, which will be hard for some to acknowledge is now incorrect. But energy levels have increased since the first accelerators in the 1960s, and the formation of the three quark model of the proton is now being challenged by a pentaquark model. And a pentaquark is four quarks and an antiquark. The reason is simple. It takes more energy to separate the final two quarks, which is that quark-antiquark pair. So, as collision energies increase, the probability of seeing more pentaquarks also increases, because the proton is a pentaquark. The next prediction will require even more energy in proton collisions. Gluons that hold quarks together in the proton are incredibly strong, so separating these quarks is difficult. However, once these energy levels are achieved, we will see why quarks are never found in isolation in nature. Electrons and positrons should be detected at greater percentages as energies increase, not quarks. The last prediction for particle colliders is one that might be difficult to reach due to its tremendous amount of energy that's required. If energy can reach levels seen in supernova, we won't see many quarks or electrons or protons, positrons. It will be dominated by neutrinos. But even if colliders cannot reach energy levels equal to that of supernova, where 99% of energy is em emitted as neutrinos, there should at least be an increase in the percentage of neutrinos seen. Speaking of neutrinos, the next type of experiments to patiently observe and wait for published results will come from two types, the large detectors that capture neutrinos and experiments that create a beam of neutrinos. Neutrino detectors have the complicated task of waiting for a few collisions 
out of trillions and trillions of neutrinos that pass through without detection. They are hard to detect, and even harder to pinpoint an exact energy level. So far, there are three known types of neutrinos, the electron neutrino, muon neutrino, and tau neutrino. There should be additional types of neutrinos. Although they are hard to detect and distinguish from one of the existing neutrinos, the process of oscillation should be nothing more than neutrinos merging and forming new particles, similar to atoms that combine protons to form new atoms. There should be a handful of neutrinos at energies between the electron neutrino and muon neutrino. The energy levels of these neutrinos are documented in EWT. Neutrino beams are one of the ways to test neutrino oscillation, which is the forming of new neutrino particles. For example, the smallest neutrino becoming a larger muon or a tau neutrino. This is currently accepted because all three neutrinos are neutral particles. What will be harder for some to accept is the possibility of electrons, which are charged particles, being created in neutrino beams. Why? If the neutrino is a fundamental particle, and remember that 99% of all energy from supernova explodes as neutrinos, then it should be possible to recreate particles, like electrons, with sufficient energy to merge. Therefore, electrons should be found in neutrino beams that cannot be explained from any other source other than neutrinos. The next experiment requires a satellite or mission to another planet, but this experiment must be far from Earth and not a satellite around our planet. A free neutron, which is one in isolation and not within an atomic nucleus, decays from a neutron to become a proton on average in about 15 minutes. But these experiments that determine its decay time were conducted here on Earth. If the same experiment is done away from Earth, it's predicted that the decay time will vary. The neutron will have a shorter decay time when it's closer to the sun and a longer de decay time when it's further from the sun. EWT proposes the reason for the neutron's decay is the probability of a solar neutrino striking the core of the neutron, which is on average 15 minutes on Earth but the same experiment on Mars should result in a much longer decay time because there will be fewer solar neutrinos. The last type of experiment requires significantly higher voltage electricity and likely with superconducting materials. In high voltage experiments with superconducting materials and at the right frequencies for resonance, it's expected that we will see gravitational anomalies. By this, I mean fluctuations that cannot be explained by our current understanding of forces. For example, non-magnetic objects in a vacuum that experience weight loss. But it won't be a new force to add to the standard model. It will be a recreation of the electric force to compensate for its shading effect through the Earth. Why? EWT models gravity as a difference in electric force as a result of absorption from large bodies like Earth. This experiment, like others proposed in the video, may already be underway today, and to validate components of EWT, we eagerly await the results of experiments, sift through their findings, and hopefully one day validate one or more of these predictions.